Okay, I think everyone's here. So let's uh, let's get started. Hi guys, my name is Arsh Singh. I am pre-sales solutions engineer at Soft Solutions. Today we'll look into Desktop Central's new add-on available that is OS Deployer. In this webinar, firstly I'll go over Desktop Central a bit, then we'll look into how this new add-on fits into the Desktop Central. Later we'll look into a few features and benefits of OS Deployer and the architecture behind it. And lastly we'll look into the fun stuff that is the product demo. If you guys have any questions, please let me know down in the comments section and I will be happy to answer them at the end of this webinar. Alright, without any further ado, let's get this started guys. Many of us already know that Desktop Central is the go-to software for patching, deploying software or configurations to endpoints, remote control, asset management, mobile device management and, and, and many more. With the new OS Deployer add-on, you can now deploy images from the dashboard. So right from provisioning of OS to retirement of computers, everything can now be handled in Desktop Central itself. The primary task of OS deployment involves capturing the OS image. OS imaging is a process to capture the image of a specific OS from the desired system along with the set of its applications. The captured image will be stored in an image repository and that image repository is a network share from where images will be deployed to client computers. This OS image can be deployed on a new bare metal computer or an existing system with an OS. A few features and benefits. So this new add-on, it provides simplified and centralized live imaging techniques. You can perform both offline and online imaging. You can customize the images according to your needs and also provides fast and automated OS deployment techniques including deployment via unique authentication passcode. I will show you guys these in the product demo that will make more sense then. One of the main characteristics or factors in deploying OS's are drivers. So there are two types of driver management offered. First one is automatic driver collection and second is manual driver collection. So in automatic driver collections, drivers will be automatically collected from image captured machines and stored in a centralized repository. In manual driver collections, in this you will be manually adding the drivers which are required for your deployment. A centralized master image can be captured and deployed to multiple vendor platforms. For example, you can, uh, let's say you can capture an image of a HP machine and deploy it across, uh, let's say Dell or, or some other vendors. That is, that is definitely possible with the um, driver repository, so we'll automatically pick up those. The architecture behind the OS deployment within Desktop Central, so th this new add-on can be explained in three simple steps. Step one, create your master image. Step two, customize your deployment as your needs. Step three, push your master image out to a machine or multiple machines. So now that you're more familiar with OS Deployer, let's go ahead and take a look at the product itself. So this is our um, good old desktop central. I'm sure you guys are very familiarized with it. Even if you're not, not to worry. We can always have a personalized demo session after this and where I can work with you guys one-on-one -on -one and talk about any of these features you want to know more about. So for this uh, webinar, let's just focus on the OS deployment. You'll probably, you'll see that um, there is a new tab between inventory and mobile device management. You see OS deployment with a little new written in, um, with, with a yellow new written on the top right. So this is where you can choose what, uh, what image and how to deploy it and customize the deployments. So you can create images, uh, uh, so like I mentioned before, and features and benefits, you can create online and offline imaging. Online imaging is when an active system is remotely imaged without any user intervention. To perform online imaging in a system, image creator components will be installed by Desktop Central. This image creator component will capture the image of the system. So basically it is the imaging of an OS of a computer where the OS is still active and running. So let's go ahead and create a, uh, let's go, uh, let me show you how to create a online image. I want to go ahead and uh, create one. A webinar and 
computers to image. So like I said, this is online and live. I can go ahead and browse, choose from Active Directory, choose my uh, domains or work group. And if I go click all, and I should be able to see all the devices that I can choose any of these and um, just hit OK. And I should be able to uh, create an online image with the right credentials. The credentials are your admin credentials. So you can install, uh, you know, you can have pre-configured credentials so you don't have to fill it um, again and again. So you choose your admin creden uh, credentials and you just hit continue and an image will be created. Just to speed things up, I have already created a, uh, in this case, my master image is the Workstation 5. That's the uh, image computer name. And I can drill down into it. I'll show you what it looks like after we have imaged it. As you can see, it took me 33 minutes, 55 seconds. Uh, this is running in a lab environment. So it is a, it is a virtual machine. So that's why I didn't want to show it in, in the webinar. It would take a bit uh, longer time. And you can see a few more uh, details here and see our image repository where this is stored. That was online image. Let's talk about offline image. So in offline imaging, the system is stopped and booted into Windows pre-installed environment, which is WinPE. Imaging is later performed using the WinPE component. This component is stored within a media, so it could be USB, PIXC, or ISO. Basically, it is the imaging of the OS of a computer, which is actually shut down. So let me go ahead and show you guys the offline imaging side. <clears throat> so in order for me to show you this, I will. I already have a uh, my workstation five up and running. So I will just drag that here. So this is. Let's see if I can make it any bigger. No, this won't go any bigger. So, um, so this is the. Um, I have booted this for my workstation five master image. And with uh, as an ISO over here it gives me an option to use my admin credentials and perform offline imaging and deployment so I will go ahead and enter my credentials hit authenticate So over here, I can create an image or deploy this image. For this, the machine needs to be shut down. So the actual operating system on this workstation 5 is Windows 7. It is shut down. I've booted it into a WinPE environment. And I can create an image of this as an offline, or I can deploy this image to different machines. Let's go ahead into the how we can customize our deployment. So this one way you can so you can create your own deployment templates and you, that's one way to deploy an image and the second way to want the first way to deploy an image is to create deployment templates and the second way to deploy um, an image is to create deployment tasks so let's look into the first one deploy um, uh, templates so every organization has its own user um, user and you know your department needs for each department the admin would want to provide a specific OS with a particular set of applications and this requirement will vary accordingly. You can customize the captured image by creating deployment templates where you can select the disk partitions, configure the settings to be performed after successful deployment and define the computer settings like adding computer under domain, adding user accounts, installing applications to the target computers, etc. So let, before I get into this, let me talk about a few scenarios. So for admi administrators working in hospitals, you might have various departments like uh, radiology or pharmaceutical, etc. cetera. Um, and you can customize deployment for each department by creating different deployment templates. For admins working in, let's say, uh, colleges or schools, for each de uh, department students, you can create different deployment templates. So you have a, you, so you have created a deployment template for science students, so whenever a new science student joins, you can uh, you know deploy that template to that uh, to the new student. So these are the pre these are a set of activities which is needed to be performed after image deployment. So let's go ahead and create a deployment template. I will name it webinar template. 
I will select my image. In this case, I already have an image like I showed you before. I'll choose my Windows 7. This is a repository where I store that. I will choose my drives. I can specify the hard disk I want to deploy. What I want to do after shutdown restart. Target computer name. Let's just say this is my one. Uh, target domain. I will choose my domain. Now we'll use the target user account. So what user do I want to add uh, when um, it's here? And I will enter the user's uh, password. Confirm the password. And the group name. Is it a guest? So this is these are the local settings for this machine and um, choose my applications that I want to deploy. So I can choose any existing applications I already have with an OS deployer or I can choose um, upload my own ones. So you can add and install. So if I go ahead and do this, say if I want to add PuTTY, I can choose PuTTY here. So you can add and install applications, scripts, and drivers which are available as executables to the target computer after the deployment. I'll go cancel with this one. Let's look into our uh, deployment, deploy image tab. So. So after imaging the OS and customizing it according to your needs, the last important task is to deploy this image on the target computers. So types of machines where images can be deployed. So Desktop Central supports deployment of OS on bare metal computers, like I already said. Um, OS can be redeployed on existing machines with OSs. So these are generally the machines with corrupted OS where redeployment can be performed for troubleshooting purposes. OS is, can be deployed on virtual machines too. In this case, I've already shown you that it can be deployed on virtual machines. So now go, let's go ahead and add a deployment task. So we'll go ahead, let's name it webinar task. I'll choose my template that I've created before. I can check my post deployment settings that I've entered in the, in the particular template. I'll hit next. So this is, so these are the two deployment modes. So you can deploy image either by generating a passcode or by remotely waking up computer. So by generating a passcode, you can generate a unique four digit passcode, digital code, um, and enter this code in the target computer to deploy the image. For security reasons, it's only valid for 10 minutes. And then the next way is via MAC address. So you can also remotely wake up computers and deploy image. Specify the computer's MAC address, IP address, and subnet mask details to remotely wake up computer and initiate deployment. So you can do that as well. So let's hit next. We'll choose the passcode method. And lastly, we have deployment settings. So you can select the deployment method um, to deploy the images. So we have, firstly, let's look at multicast. So in multicast deployment method, the server sends the image copy to multiple computers at the same time, and this prevents excess bandwidth consumption. For example, if you have purchased, let's say, 100 bare metal machines, and you want to deploy OS to them at the same time, you can choose multicast method. The bandwidth consumption will be less in this method, since the same copy of OS image will be sent to all the target computers at the same time. This method is recommended when you want to deploy images to multiple computers. Let's look at the unicast deployment method. So in the unicast deployment method, the server sends the image copy to each computer one by one. For example, you might have a, a new uh, employee joining an organization and you want to give a new system to him with a specific OS. You can choose unicast deployment method. To serve in this method, the server will send the OS image to each target computer separately. And this method is recommended for deployment up to five computers.
and you can schedule your deployment as well if you do not want to do it now and you want to do it later on. So these are the main things. Uh, later, uh, next thing I'll show you guys is, are the driver. Uh, these are the discovered drivers from the machines that you've already uh, imaged. And you can have your driver repositories. You can add your own driver repositories here, which doesn't seem to work right now. Yeah, you can, like I said, automatic collection, you can do that. And you can do missing drivers as well if you have any. And you can add applications as a product here. And you can check the logs. All right, that was, uh, that was the technical side of the things, guys. If you guys have um, any questions, please write them down in the question section and I'll be happy to answer them. If you would like uh, another personalized product demo uh, and want me to show you further steps, um, and um, you can contact us at sales at and it would be great if you guys could check out our website as well where we post um, latest blogs, forums, and you can find more about the uh, Manager to New Zealand events. Thank you, guys.